Okay, getting back into it. Um, in the camera and layout series for Previs, we got to this point where we'd referenced in all of these um, assets. So the this train car, um, this particular character rig, and we had set up our cameras. So I've got cameras set up at the moment um, in the something called the camera sequencer for uh, a specific frame range, and that frame range all is tied to image sequences, images, image sequences like the one that I've exported here from After Effects, and I'm using those to base, I'm using that as a guide for my beginning and my end shots. So what I'm going to do um, here is I'm going to set up, uh, I'm going to set up my Maya scene so that it's much easier for me to animate. Um, I want to have uh, basically what you see here now. I want to have in my top left hand corner my shot camera. In my right hand corner here I'll stay in perspective so that I've got um, a space that I can freely move things around in without screwing up my shot. In the bottom left hand corner I've got my camera sequencer and this is what allows me to scrub through and switch from shot to shot to shot. And let's just actually make sure that I'm selecting. There we go. So camera sequencer, I have, it's basically a little video editing tool with a Maya that lets you set up your shots and cut between them. Um, uh, so I need to be able to see that. And I need my outliner. Now my outliner is not currently there because it's been torn off in another window. So let me just show you how to add your outliner in there um, if you've never actually done that before. So in Maya, you can get to this four screen view. If you just press the space bar, you're able to jump in and out of screens. And anything I hover my mouse over, I can jump into that screen and out again. And of course, um, you've got layout icons on the left hand side of the screen, which lets you jump in and out as well. So let's say I specifically want the outliner here in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to go to panels and um, panel and outliner is right there at the very top. So bam, there we've got, there we have it. My outliner is good to go. Okay, that just makes um, selecting things much easier, makes life much easier. Okay, so let's get our image sequence set up uh, for this specific camera so that we can um, match our poses correctly. So in After Effects, when you are exporting an image sequence, um, export that as a Maya if. A Maya if uh, .iff is very easy for Maya to load. Um, it, it's quite happy to run through that sequence. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So I had exported a sequence earlier. Let's go find that. And... Okay, you see we got dot .iff here, and it should be a your the name of the sequence, full stop, number of the frame, full stop, and the extension. I'll just open that. And this image plane shape node, this lives on your camera, so there's a couple ways you can get to that. You can select your camera in the outliner, and you'll see the image plane shape node is the third one in here, but you can also, with whatever view, you have selected, go to view, and camera attribute editor, and that brings it up over here as well. So that image plane node, that has, besides showing me where my images are, it's got this option called use image sequence. If I turn that on, um, now it should use that sequence, but let's just, it's kind of hard to see at the moment because all my 3D is in the way. So if I turn on X-ray mode, which is just here at the top of my my um, view window, uh, you can see that I've got the sequence there. Now the alpha gain here on the image plane shape, that lets me turn the sequence on or off by adjusting the opacity. And if I step through my timeline, you'll see that that image sequence adjusts based on whatever frame it is. Now the image sequence itself, 
goes for, let's just check that out. The image sequence itself goes for 221 frames. So, and it starts on frame zero. So we'll set our frame range to 221. That way we can step through the entire sequence. And we've got frames one through 221. Now when I originally did this, um, my sequence for the shot was a bit shorter. I have since increased the length of that shot. So that you see my camera name down here is shot one, frame zero to 133, which is of course inaccurate. So I'm just going to rename that now, knowing full well that I'm going to have to adjust the frame ranges for the rest of my cameras at some point, um, which I can do at a, a later date. Okay, so my next order of business is to make it very easy for myself to animate. And there's a couple of things that will make it very easy to animate. Things like trying to select this little curve here can be difficult if I'm accidentally selecting these polygons all the time. So I try to select these curves on the ground and sometimes I get them, sometimes I get the get the, her actual feet um, and I don't want to accidentally select the environment either. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell Maya um, oh by the way I don't even if I'm clicking on this I don't want to actually select it. So to do that I'm going to create something called um, I'm going to create a layer and add all of these to it and then just make it so I can see it as a reference but I can't interact with it. So we're going to go to the channel box layer editor which is um, it's a tab just here on the far right hand side of the UI and now I, the easiest way for me to select all the polygons in the scene is to isolate all the polygons in the scene. So at the very top of my UI here I'm going to go show and I'll say none and then I'll go back to show and turn on just polygons so that all I get are these polygons. Select all those and here on the far right hand of the UI I've got this um, under layers I have this icon which looks like a piece of paper and a little blue ball and a sun. I don't know what that is meant to represent, but okay. Maybe a, a polygon and a light and things you might want to layer. So if I um, click on this, not only will it create a brand new layer here, but it's going to add everything onto that. So I can turn all of the visibility off, but if I click on this middle bu button twice, basically what it's done as it's created, um, it's, it's essentially made all of these scenes unselectable. So let me just name that really quick to um, Polygons Layer, so that we know what that is. Okay, um, sweet. Let's turn everything back on again. And um, now I do believe it's time to start animating. My very first job of course is going to be coming in here and making sure that her arms are in the right position. Right now she's just leaning back. Um, she's not in her full pose. Uh, and then my um, the next, next thing I'll be doing is finding the next major extreme pose which is of course here on about frame 160 and make sure that she is partway through the train and leaning forward on frame 60. And finally, I'll set up the pose for frame 221 where she's looking out the window. Now I am actually going to set up all of her poses first. I'm going to animate her first and then I'll animate the, car the camera because you should always animate the camera to follow the character. The camera is like a person's eyes tracking a character across the room. So the character um, would sit up, so uh, just if I just hit play here, the character would first sit up and then get up, start to move, the camera would follow them across the train, and then over to the other side of the train. And it's just weird if the camera moves first, it's like omniscient camera, the camera that knows all and can guess the character's movement before they move, and then that's just not fun at all. Um, that's some crap camera work right there.
Okay, so let's not be crap camera artists. Let's actually set up our animations first, and then we'll do our cameras.